Hi, I'm Eli Glasner. Welcome to the Directors Guild of Canada Red Carpet Roundtables. Today we're joined by four directors at the forefront of scripted television, comedy, and drama. Stefan Brogren, Degrassi, The Next Class. Ken Girardi, Pure. Helen Shaver, Vikings. Alicia Young, The Baroness Von Sketch Show. All right, thank you everyone for uh, joining us. We're going to commiserate. We're going to do some venting. We're going to solve all the problems, maybe some healing. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll work things out. Um, I want to start with something you were just talking about, about rehearsal. And you know, so many of you are under so much pressure to get those pages and you know, deliver the, the episode uh, on time. Talk to me about the importance of rehearsal and how that I guess helps you, you know, weather the storm. Oh, I think no. I think it is. It has everything to do with efficiency. I mean, I was just talking about a scene that we shot yesterday, with uh, eleven speaking roles and about four and a half pages in a town hall with a hundred extras and uh, multiple co coverage necessary. And we're shooting in a cinematic way, not in a, mm -hmm. you know, over over close up. You know, it's we're shooting it rather well, I must say. Mm. Uh, a great young uh, cinematographer, Jackson Parrell. Um, anyway, so what I did was say I need an hour's rehearsal, and of course production goes, oh my God, you can't have an hour. I say, no, I want an hour's rehearsal before the crew, before anybody comes right. on. Then, then all the actors know what they're doing, and, and I'm very clear of what I have, not what I'm hoping to have, but what I actually have in terms of performance. It's for the excellence of the performance, but it is also the most efficient thing. We, we, we shot eight and a half hours mm -hmm. of, of from call time to wrap. It was eight and a half hours, as opposed to 10 hours, 12 hours, because of that time spent early. Right. You know, and, and production, there's a lot, you know, a lot of production doesn't think that way, so yeah. sometimes the director has to educate them a little bit. Now, on Degrassi, mm -hmm. do you have time? I mean, it, it, it's such a fast-moving show. There's a lot of components. We have two days of rehearsal for every episode. Really? For every block that we do. So yeah. we, what we do, because we're such a collective <coughs> as far as our cast is concerned, we can always we, we separate two days while we're shooting the uh, prior block. Mm -hmm. We'll get those kids, we'll steal them from set, and we'll bring them in for rehearsal. And just the ones that are most necessary. It changes how we move, how fast we go. They come in more grounded. Mm -hmm. Because at least they've had a chance to, you know, beyond a read through, sit down and go, what's working, what's not. Sometimes, if you want to do like a big one -er, yeah. you know, you can't get them on set. You got 12 kids and try to move around the school, and they're I'm like, you're, you, get, you get to explain to them, guys, if you screw up now or on the day, uh, we're going to be here all day. So we can sit there and we can play with yeah. the lines and try to see what works and do almost sort of like mini blocking in our. We have a rehearsal space, yeah. and uh, it. it it makes all the difference in the world to have those young actors come to set prepared in the way that they are like, so is this like when we rehearse? It's like, well, let's, no, now we can fool around. Now we can try different things. But to have them come, we save so much time oh, yeah. on the floor. It is, more people should be doing it. I yeah. think it's an amazing time saver to actually be able to, and like I said, we have a big cast. So we can steal some when they're not, it's not, they're not always on set. So we don't, we can, we can take people from here and there while they're shooting, we're not going to school and rehearse with them a little bit makes a big difference. Now, Alicia, my impression when I watch Baroness Von Sketch is that everything feels kind of like live and in the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's just because it's working and you've, yeah. you've convinced me. Um, <laughs> are you able to kind of try things or do you try and just kind of capture it as there's you, definitely as you there's go. definitely a lot of improv, which is what you're probably yeah. feeling. Like that's their that's their background, that's where they come from. But we going into it just because we knew we had so little time and we're shooting so many like we're shooting five sketches in a day sometimes you know there's like it was mm -hmm. a crazy like we would do eight ten twelve pages sometimes it was insane so knowing you're going into a schedule like that like when i started i kind of demanded some rehearsal time and, and mm -hmm. we only had two days and because they're all stretched so thin those two days kind of reduced to like an hour here an hour there and i would have loved to have more and mm -hmm. hearing you guys talk about it i no, no, I'm going to set my phone down <laughs> yeah, and demand yeah. it. But at this end, there were certain ones, there were certain sketches that we knew were going to be kind of 
a little more complicated in terms of how I wanted to shoot them. So those are the ones that we would rehearse. But you certainly couldn't rehearse all 115 sketches except for in the like private blocking right, right before we shot it. So, but in some ways, you know, there's you don't want to over rehearse a show like that because it's so imp you know, there's yeah. so much improv. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's it was more just for the complicated kind of blocking scenes. Um, but yeah, there's it was all kind of for me it was like I would put them kind of in the zone so at least I could capture it all and then give them room to kind of play around within that. But a lot of the times too it was, you know, the, it was funny reading the scripts because they would end on, um, end on, pri on uh, you know, the, the scripts would be written and it would be like fade, fade, on, fade on banter, yeah. you know, or something like that. <laughs> it's like, but banter. you know you can't cut <laughs> yeah. on banter. Like it just doesn't, doesn't work that way. So, so a lot of the times they would, they, you know, you could let them go for like, they could go forever and just keep talking and talking, but then eventually you have to kind of rein them in a little bit and, you know, be like, okay, we need something to end the scene on so mm -hmm. that we can cut, but mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, so yeah. Ken, on, on Pure, where you have like, it's a very structured story, there's an arc, you're working towards an end point, you have some big scenes, lots of people in a church or what have you, action, explosions. How do you preserve the space to let your actors still find moments when everything is so kind of structured around them? Well, that's uh, the trick of the director. I mean, that's what the <laughs> yeah. director does. Okay, so uh, tell us. I, well, I, I mean, I, I come from theater. Oh, really? I come from a, a place where it's all about the text and it's all about what's going on on the stage and mm. it's all about that and in theater the sort of uh, reverence toward the text and the performance and uh, how the space is occupied with the energy of the actors is sacrosanct. Mm. And on a film set, um, you know, when I was starting out I was shocked yeah. at how much it orbited the technical side of things. And it took me a while to understand and now that you know, um, I'm a bit of an older dog, as it were, <laughs> um, and more deeply and meaningfully understand the technical side of things. Uh, I arrive on the set with the attitude every day that uh, all of that stuff is kind of, you know, after you've uh, made your decisions about, you know, shot composition and you've kind of done your blocking and, you know, you know what's going to happen and you've turned the set over to the the crew to kind of light and make it happen. Really, the the whole reason you're there is that, you know, 45 minutes or an hour and a half that you get as a director with the actors on the set. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. It's not about anything else. It's about th that scene, those faces, the energy on that particular day, and how you find the truth of the scene on that particular day. Mm -hmm. And I suppose from, from my roots in theater, um, um, I, I, I've just always uh, really tried to preserve, and I suppose I realized maybe uh, earlier than I may have had I not come from theater, that uh, that has to be protected at all costs because it's the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. So in terms of pure, I'm not really answering your question, but in terms of pure, we didn't have a lot of rehearsal time. And because I shot all six, I, my time even off the set was consumed with meetings about the next episode or the next block of two episodes we were doing. And then at night I'd be editing and stuff like, and we've all been through that where you're doing three things at once, you know, that's kind of the, mm -hmm. the world of a director, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, so those, mo and we didn't have any rehearsal time because we just didn't have the money. But I did make time with the actors socially before we started. So night after night after night, we'd be together. And we didn't get to put it on its feet or rehearse, but we got to do talk after talk after talk, not necessarily a table read, but it constituted yeah. the kind of rehearsal you might get um, you know, in the early days of a theater piece. But then once we were on the set, I just tried to preserve the time I had for rehearsals and preserve the time I had mm -hmm. to shoot it. I yeah. would say even with like our, our when we rehearse, it's a lot mm -hmm. of the same thing. It's conversations that mm -hmm. are starting based on the scene, and that that's what that's where you're getting the the performance grows because at least you're having a chance to not feel so stuck in the words in the moment. Then we can talk about it, blow it up a little bit, make it smaller. But that conversation starts everything really. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I found that when I go into a situation like the Vikings, say, uh, um, I make sure in my prep that I spend not only some social time, but actually in my office I have the second AD uh, schedule that I, uh, that I spend, after the actors have gotten, 
of the script and I've read the script from 15 minutes to two hours with, you know, what, depending on the character. <clears throat> and, and I always begin with uh, what do you love most about what's going on with your character? Mm. What do you hate most about what's going on on the set and with your character? And what, what, what is it that you know about you, your character that nobody else seems to realize? That's a great question. Yeah. What, do you, what, what does no one else realize about your yeah. character? Yeah. Do you think part of that sensitivity comes from your experience as an actor that you kind of, you, you've been that person seeing how your character is misunderstood or mishandled? As a, now, as an actor, I know for sure, I used to think, what the hell? What, what is it? Not with everybody, but there'd be some, you think, what is this? What? And I got in my first concept meeting where I was the only woman in the mid-90s, uh, and, uh, and it, during the course of the conversation, I said something about, yeah, but I think we should blah, 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 because, you know, he's going to need that, speaking of the actor. And somebody at the table said, oh, come on, he's just a fucking actor, Helen. And I went, and, and the, fucking, the fucking didn't bother me. The adjective that I went, that's what I've been feeling yeah. was mm -hmm. just. Just. Yeah. Yeah. just. Yeah. 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 Because the better the pr actor is, the least you can see, the less work you see. Mm -hmm. You know, in Ordinary People, everybody got a nomination except Donald Sutherland, who did some of the most impeccable work of his career, mm -hmm. and it just disappeared. Mm -hmm. he, you know, it, it, the most brilliant is unrecognized, you know? Stefan, when did you start thinking, I want to be the guy on the other side of, of the camera, that this isn't enough? Well, uh, I think it goes back to when I was in... I was in theater school in Los Angeles. I just finished Degrassi. I was going to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And I was just having so much more fun with the directors, I think, than I was actually on the, <laughs> on the stage. Uh -huh. And it was a 10-year period, I think, where I actually was really deciding that I was going to do it. Where I was, be my best friend, Samir Rahem, who was doing this roundtable last year, he was, we met in Los Angeles, and he was a production manager slash editor. And we just started, like, we started wanting to do our own little projects. In the meantime, you know, you're coming back to Toronto, and you're doing, you're doing every show that's out there as an actor. So you're doing Doc, and you're doing, well, you know, the, during the 90s. And um, uh, during that time, though, we just had enough frustration, I think, to be able to push yourselves into going, let's try to make something that we can actually uh, sell ourselves as, more than you just being in the editor, even though he's a great editor. And my, I was starting to, like, I was starting with the writing. And I mm -hmm. wanted to try to get into directing as well. Uh, it took about 10 years, I think, for us to fail hugely, but get recognized for it. That <laughs> that's it a was, long, yeah. that's a long, what was the decade, decade of failure? Well, we made, tough. we made a film. <laughs> in and, a, and, and laudable at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 We made a film right when digital video was coming out. And we're like, everyone started use, use, utilizing it. Like, there was time code that had come yeah. out. And, and we're like, how do we do this in a way that's original for us? that feels like we're not just copying time code because you can just keep shooting for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we decided, why don't we throw a party? Why don't we get 12 of our favorite actors and we will, um, we're, and we rehearsed for two weeks okay. and made those relationships happen. And then we invited 200 of our friends mm -hmm. and we rented a house mm -hmm. and we had cameras set up everywhere. And we said, you know, when you come inside, this was like, this was in uh, 97. <laughs> yeah, you had to sign a thing. Yeah. And we shot, which basically was a play. Because no, it was not. It was uh -huh. not. There were no lines, and the, the, these things had to happen during the evening. So we started at noon, and we finished at four in the morning, and oh, wow. we sold, it, sold yeah. it to the movie network and IFC, and we made our money back. But I remember, you know, going like we were really proud of it. It was our first thing. We got a lot of like. What, what's it called? It's I mean, called Invitation. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, Samir directed it, and I wrote it and starred in it, and a lot of our great friends who've all like moved on to amazing other things, mm -hmm. and are, are you know, it's. Uh, um, but it was one of those things that we got, I, I remember we were at a beer festival and someone came up to said, you guys are from that movie Invitation, right? Mm. It's, like, it's like, that movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and she gave us the finger and walked away. No, we're like, we're like no. and we were honestly like, I can't believe she saw it. <laughs> you know, like, you're, you're, just ex you're just so excited that someone saw it. You know? She saw it. She saw totally it saw it. To but it, it did get us a lot of recognition from people huh. that actually mattered. Yeah. And so they said, and people were just like, how the hell did you do that? Or congratulations, mm. you know, Linda Schuyler and mm. Stephen Stone, who, uh, you know, created Grassy, were very much like, how the, you, that was, she's like, that reminds me of when I first started Grassy. Yeah. I like that gorilla, like that thing. It, it definitely was something we had to spend uh, several years to get to. Yeah. Mm. Now, you here's know? the thing. On this like giant beast like Degrassi with so yeah. many moving parts and an appetite for episodes, how do you keep that 
freshness alive. You can't do the invitation thing again, and there's a certain format, but is there a way that you kind of keep it? I feel our format changes yeah. as the years progress. Mm -hmm. The stories that we would tell about uh, being a homosexual in the 80s versus how we tell a story about being LGBTQ in mm -hmm. the today's world um, changes how you tell story. Mm -hmm. And the speed that our, our audience can now access information online and how they treat their mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. changes how we tell story. So we are able to, uh, I think we've been able to advance with the times, you know, um, and it, it's, it's definitely like we, you watch, you can watch an old Degrassi episode and it's very quaint. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. at the time when we had a 13 year old, an actual 13 year old being pregnant, not in real life, but, but as the character, <laughs> it was the biggest outrage. And how, and a parent didn't step in to save the day, sort of thing. Yeah. These kids are, you know, it's like, it, it's in a strange way, it's, it relates to Anne in a lot of ways of like, sort of like going mm -hmm. for it and, and dealing with the consequences. Mm -hmm. Where that didn't really happen that much in television. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like different strokes where dad came in and said, hey, listen, uh, we gotta fix this situation. And uh, so that's, that's, that's changed over time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just been a progression of how we get to tell story is quicker because they're, they can take in so much more, and that's yeah. the scary thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Ken, being able to do all the episodes of Here, that's a bit of a luxury, but, and, and both of you can speak to this. Talk to me about being that journeyman director, being kind of dropped in to a series for a couple episodes, and wanting to make it your own, having ambitions, having a vision, but being confined within you know, this larger series, and the crew, and everybody. You're the, you're the new guy on set, basically. I found, um, you know, over the last few years, I've needed to uh, uh, find a tonic here and there, and uh, so, um, you know, Helen's done Vikings, I've done Vikings. Mm -hmm. Vikings is a bit of a tonic. It sure is. I did 14 episodes in the first three seasons, and I felt like I had a big part of shaping that show, even yeah. though I was a journeyman. Yeah. Um, I fell in love with Michael Hurst, so that was a little bit of a tonic. Uh, when I did Mayor Thorpe years ago, uh, which was a TV movie, uh, 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 that was a bit of a tonic. And now Pure was a bit of a tonic. And by that I mean when you get swooped in to do, uh, uh, you, 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 when you're gigging, I call yeah. it, um, it's a challenge, obviously, on a whole lot of levels because you have to, you know, obviously check your ego at the door to a certain degree. But there's an interesting kind of, challenge that gets set, set up and I find it really fun to go into a show that has a pre-described set of you know rules, in a sense. rules and regulations and here's how you do it and stuff like that and in my own subversive way reinvent it as best I can mm -hmm. in small ways and you try and take all those rules and you try to push them to the limit and you try to make them better and you try and in a way you're trying to push the the showrunners and the writers into oh you mean our show could be that? Mm -hmm. So that becomes fun. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, there's that other part of it, which is you've always got you know some hot breath uh, over your shoulder, and you'd really rather do this, but the budget won't allow it. Or if you had you know control over a little bit more of it, you could rob Peter and pay to pay yeah, Paul yeah. in order yeah. to preserve that little bit. And on the sort of uh, 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 you know broader scale, that's kind of what those little tonics do for me. Mm -hmm. I come in and I do my little thing where I go. Ah, oh. mm. I felt like I was an auteur for that. <laughs> and then, you walk and then away and I walk away and I can go on. and I can go into these other shows yeah. and I feel like yeah I can participate, but then that grind kind of weighs down on me a little bit and yeah. I go okay, mm -hmm. I I need to I need to fix now I need to go out yeah. and get my works and I need to fix and I find one of these things so that's how I've survived it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm amazed, Helen, in that like you felt the confidence in coming into a show like Vikings and like opening up this can of worms like tell me your grievance what are you unhappy with i mean it's not necessary me? yeah with with oh with the actors yeah oh yeah, no like, that, that's just a personal conversation between hu two human beings right mm -hmm. so i'm not opening a can of worms i'm inviting them to be intimate with me mm -hmm. because trust is where where the work is done work comes from love and joy and trust if there's fear involved or or, or falsehood it, it has no grounding and it doesn't go anywhere it's all then just an intellectual exercise where you're thinking feelings, and that's mm -hmm. called soap opera. Right. And uh, of which I have no interest. Now, Alicia, on Baroness von Sketch, it's like you're, I imagine, some days making like five different movies because you're playing with genre mm -hmm. and you're, 
you know, this is an this looks like a commercial. This is set in a women's spa. This is the apocalypse. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> just, you know, just, well, yeah, just, just a couple different things. So how how do you try to make that your own? Are you more in kind of service to the the sketch? Well, idea? it was. I mean, my whole thing is for each sketch that comes off the page. I always like if we have the rehearsal at all, just going back to that, mm -hmm. we're not necessarily like, we don't have time to block it out, but I do want to know the intention of each scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the what is the comedic intent? Where, what, like, you know, because I think that if you don't have that, then you don't know where the jokes lie. Um, and then from, because as they're, as they're writers and, and improvisers a lot of times, and actors, they are not necessarily thinking of the filmic version of the, of the piece. So it's my job to kind of take that intention and try to kind of Make it a little bit more visual than it comes off the page, and and trying to trying to figure that out with them. And so yeah, with each with each sketch, we just kind of you know see where like there's a lot of stuff that just happens that are just like real real moments mm -hmm. in real time. And yeah, you can. I mean, it was a great show to do because you can play around with genre so much, and it was a great exercise in kind of being able to do. I've never done a sci-fi. I've mm -hmm. never done you yeah. know never shot on Mars before. You know, <laughs> but this allows me. It was. I mean. It, for me, and it was my first show ever, and and it was great because I got to do a bunch of things I'd never done before, and it gave me a base to take all those things that I learned and do them on other things. How much awareness when you guys are are or gals are mm -hmm. are creating the sketches and and thinking about production? Are you of the the social media dimension? Because it seems like the show has gotten second, third, fourth life now, and mm -hmm. we've all seen the videos on Facebook and what have you. And the way people watch stuff online is different. The appetite is different. You mm -hmm. almost have to get to the, the the joke or the core quicker. Yeah. Are you? Is that a consideration, or is that just? Not. I mean, the the social aspect of it had a life of its own once mm. it came out. Like I, I think at the time we weren't thinking that that was even they're going to be their marketing approach. But mm. because I had come from commercials, uh. you know, I work in thirty second format. So for me, it was always, you know. The, the quicker the better, and a joke, you know, you let it land too long and it's not funny anymore. And so the challenge for me was always because the ending on improv banter was always trying to kind of make it a concise, you know, piece, and you want to get out, like, it's all about comic timing, you want to get out at the right time, and some, some pieces, you know, we were calling them blackouts, where they're just like short little, like, 10, 15, 20 second little things that can exist by themselves. You add an extra five seconds to that and it doesn't work anymore. You know, you need to get in and out. Um, mm. And because because of that format, I mean, sketch just like lends itself to, to viral videos, to short, mm. like, you know, if you're watching stuff on the online, especially like this kind of, your Facebook videos and things like that, you're probably gonna watch for two minutes, three minutes seems like, in, like forever. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I think the show is just, built it like it was destined to kind of kind of take on this I think, beast. I, I, my attitude is I think if um, and maybe it's because of a Luddite. <laughs> I think I think if you spend too much time thinking about the medium through which people are mm -hmm. going to consume mm -hmm. the product, you're, you're just it's just a one gigantic wank. Self defeating. Yeah. I yeah. think it really is. I think it's about the truth when it comes to comedy mm -hmm. or it comes to drama or it comes to anything, it's about the truth. That's and it's right. about that thing we talked about, preserving that truthful moment yeah. at the beginning mm -hmm. when we talk about preserving, getting rid of all the other stuff, whether mm -hmm. it be a social media presence, whether it be a bunch of lights or a bunch of cameras or, yeah. and a bunch of people running around, mm -hmm. getting rid of all that and trying to, as best you can, find the truth of the moment with the text that you have and explore the emotional sort of highs and lows of what and and ride the little roller coaster that that yeah. that mm -hmm. scene is about yeah. Yeah. and then who cares yeah. movie yeah. tv show uh, right. twitter blurb uh youtube it's video the same process mm -hmm. uh, it's the it's same totally thing. the same process absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think part of the reason why that by Baroness those sketches also had the life that they had because because the truth is kind of at the core of all those sketches. Yeah, that's they come why it's from so funny. relatable experiences, and that's you know whether they're thirty seconds long or four minutes long, like people identify with those. I'm stories. addicted yeah. to your show. <laughs> it's the best show on television. It's so good. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. It's so good. They're, it's a group, talented group of people. Oh, it, without yeah. a doubt. And you can see everybody just mm -hmm. meshing and working together and communicating yeah. and preserving that space mm -hmm. that we've been And it was, you know, about. it was such a valuable experience, too, just because I did the, the first 
the first season and being able to be there as a creator and being and it was such a collaborative process and being able to shape the show and being able to kind of like find the look and the voice and the tone and figure out how we wanted to kind of present ourselves and you know that was really interesting and and it was an interesting experience because I did I did that and I did the first season of I did a few episodes in the first season of Working Moms as right. well and then just this season I did my first kind of like gun for hire you know oh, yeah. uh, on Kim's Convenience which was which was an interesting experience and I and part of the reason I did that was because I wanted to feel what it was like to kind of come in to mm -hmm. a show that had already been established the characters were already there they have used to working with certain directors So what was that like what did you It was an, it was great I mean it was it was it made it was actually kind of made me think about what you were saying is like what you realize as this director it's not it's you're being hired to work with your actors you're being hired to kind of to they're trusting you with their with their characters they're trusting you with their space and your job is to kind of gain their trust they want to bring you on and they you know yeah. you have to get their trust as well and then that's agree. how you make you make their show better. It's also a little liberating coming onto a second season because they have, you don't have to think, you know, they have their look established, mm -hmm. they have their yeah. style established. You know, you're, I'm there to really get a good performance, to kind of try to expand the idea, to try and make mm -hmm. it its best. Like I just did the Sneaky Pete in, in New York, mm -hmm. and uh, Michael Dinner's the uh, uh, director producer on that. You know, Michael has worked with Graham Yost for years and did Justified and stuff, and mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're, you know, those guys got decades in their mm -hmm. pocket together and stuff like that and and I had about an hour that Michael and I had a conversation and and I said so you know anything I you know th th these are this couple of scenes I'm concerned with I don't know how I'm going to approach those anything and he said no he said remember it's sneaky Pete not sneaky family I went okay good yeah I got that <laughs> and, and, and and he said and then do whatever you want Helen I mean give me something that I want to steal Mm -hmm. You know, and I, which, which, which is, good. which is a really good executive yeah, yeah, yeah. producer yeah. thing to say yeah. to a empower, empower yeah, yeah, the yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah, bring exactly. your A game. Yeah. I want to yeah, steal, yeah. steal some of your stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. go go show me something, sister. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I felt like the the biggest compliment that I got shooting Kim's because it's a convenience store and there's only so many ways to shoot. Like they've been shooting that convenience store so many. To, you know, it's a well lit convenience yeah, store. Yeah, well <laughs> lit. I mean, it's a beautiful set. It's great, but spending four days in that can drive you crazy. You know, it's just four walls. But the big the the greatest compliment was was you know even just with working with the DP and being like, no, we've never shot that angle. Before. Oh yeah. You know? yeah. 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 So exciting. Yeah. So that was like that's what you know you like when you say you kind of like find your challenges within these kind of things. It's like, okay, what am I going to tackle? Like, what do I want to achieve out of this? Oh yeah, and I just want like these small little victories. That's like, right. I want to find a new angle. It's yeah. funny how you how you come in. You know, even whether it's a gig for hire or whether you're you know you have a, a bigger stake in things, it, it's it, it goes beyond the actors because everybody shows up, mm -hmm. and a they want to do a good job. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. B, they want to be liked. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, C, they hope the experience is rewarding and enriching and not really dark and negative and horrible. And so if you think about, you know, everything from the first meeting you have with a cinematographer or a showrunner to the first meeting you have with the actors, it's all about, as you guys have been saying, building that bridge that sure. says, I'm kind of as scared shitless as you are mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. because you don't know me. I don't know. I don't know you. But uh, you know, you're in this show. You've been in this show. I'd like to know uh, things about your character that the showrunners and the writer couldn't possibly yeah, exactly. tell me. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and because if I can service you with a prop that's a little bit unexpected, or come up with an angle that may tell a little bit of a different story within this pre-described parameter that is the show. Mm -hmm then uh, maybe I have reinvented it a bit. When we have people shadow, mm -hmm. uh, it's usually someone that's gonna come direct on the show. Mm -hmm. And to create that, to, have the, to give them that opportunity, this is more of like a producer thing, where it's like, you know, to have, give them that opportunity to find themselves in a conversation with one of the actors behind the camera. And to, and you know, there have been several occasions where I've been like, with someone who's like, you know, was shadowing, getting ready for, to possibly direct, there's not even an invitation yet, but for them to have that relationship with me as, a, as one of the producers and as a, as a director, and with the actors, and to, to not come in cold, mm -hmm. in a sense, and to hopefully find what you're saying, the opportunity to be a bit of an auteur at the same time, mm -hmm. and to go, I'm not stuck. Sometimes I think, I, you know, if a director comes in and they've got, they have to sort of stick to their guidelines in their mind of like mm -hmm. being a traffic cop, 
yeah, and to get through it. And that's no fun, and that's yeah. not and that's not liberating. And I don't think that does a show any good. And I don't think that's a director. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. an executor. Absolutely. Yeah. I think what, <laughs> yeah. how, how, about the new, you know, sort of new, uh, the new improved version of television that there is out there mm -hmm. these days. I don't think any showrunner in their right minds wants somebody in a reflective vest mm -hmm. sitting behind mm -hmm. the monitor. No. What no. they want is somebody who has a point of view, yeah. who's going to do what we've been talking mm -hmm. about, reinvent the show right. uh, with respect to what the show is, yeah. or blow it up. Who mm -hmm. knows what right. they want? Yeah. But My first day, it became clear to me that, in Kim's convenience case at least, because they had the language, they have all the r relationships, they know their characters. You could easily walk on set and just block. You know, sure. Yeah. They, you could just sit back, let, them, let the DP let them walk find their and angles, and you know, yeah. and you could, and that did not appeal to me at all. But if I, you know, I think that in the wrong hands, you could easily just become that kind of director who just walks on, blocks the scene. Mm -hmm. You guys already know your characters. I'll just, you know, make sure you have it for time, or that we have the right angle. You're not blocking. But each is other. there enough support you know? at the network level to network have that freedom to explore? You know, I don't know how the network has anything to do with it. Well, or I mean, I producer guess level maybe. The producer yeah. level, like in the, yeah, the ne people overseeing the, sh the the show. If you're going to, they're going to give notes once it's kind. No, no, we're not, I don't think anybody's talking about imposing. I think everybody, no. uh, from what I my understanding yeah. of this conversation, everybody's talking about. You open a coloring book, mm -hmm. and there are some lines that are in the shape of a lion. You got to color within the lines, mm -hmm. but the the color and texture of the mm -hmm. coat of the lion is all yours to make. Yeah. Well and it's going to be a lion at the end. Yeah. It's not, you're not going to turn the lion into an elephant. <laughs> it's a lion. Uh, but you, 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 the, the texture of its coat is yours to create. In the end, the audience only sees what I see and where I have my camera look. So I can look at the same object mm -hmm. that's been seen a thousand times. And, and, and in my story, you experience it from how I see it. Mm -hmm which is why it makes three, yeah. four great directors direct the same piece with the same actors, with mm -hmm. the same crew. Each time it would be a different product. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same script. For me, there's nothing better than a crew that gets excited about someone coming in with something that's an exciting vision. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, it makes a big difference when you can see that they're like, well, let's give that a shot. Let's, let's try that. It still stays within the boundaries of the show, like you said, though, but you get to color a little different. And it's just like, sometimes, you can see sometimes a crew getting tired mm -hmm. of like what they feel is a little bit like just, you know, getting the coverage. Well, and you can do that. And yeah. I think you tire yeah. a crew of, I, I mean, I, I certainly, both as a producer and as a director, I have experienced how the director asks for something the mood the director comes in in the morning, the passion with which they embrace the material, whether they say thank you and go around and shake hands at the end mm -hmm. of the night, mm -hmm. and not just thank you to your DP and thank you to your actors, go thank the guy over there who's, mm -hmm. you know, been hauling a, a cable all day long, you yeah. know? They not get, that one, he has yeah, a no, that, that, that guy. guy. That I mean, guy. You're right, Ken, I mean, he <laughs> just, uh, uh, but no, I mean, you change the chemistry. Your presence changes the chemistry on the set. Mm -hmm. The chemistry's changed on the set, therefore the material is original. And that, mm -hmm. that, that kind of people skills, those aren't, that's not taught in any kind of film school. You didn't, don't learn that in I hope you got it in grade I one. Just, I hope well, you got it in the, so. at home, you know? I think you're coming in when you're first starting this, this industry with so much fear and, and then when people along the way that you give you the opportunity to go, what I can just explore, I, I think that's really exciting. You know, when I, as a young actor going into, and, and uh, as I, you know, found the directors that I admired mm -hmm. um, working with, the ones that made you go, let it all go away and let's have some fun, let's, or <coughs> let's, let's, let's get dark or wherever it has to be was what I've always taken from what I've wanted to be as a director is allowing myself to go, let's get the, let's, especially we're dealing with young cast, you yeah. know, they can get worked up and, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. But allowing them to feel free to explore comes, I think, just from uh, uh, time on a set, of course, you know, but having people that also don't put them in a corner, you know, and I think that is, you're, especially when you're going on to a new show, I think mm -hmm. sometimes, and you're, when you're dealing with a cast that are already in place, it's yeah. like, how do you make them feel like it's fun again yeah. and fresh? You know? As you talk to the actors, you kind of, you, you, you start to see the insecurities maybe a little bit that they've developed from the previous season or working mm -hmm. with previous, you know, and, like working with other people who have maybe made them think of those as their insecurities and then you start to feel that out and then you real like coming on for me at least it was like okay so now I know I'm not going to play into those yes. and you know I want to make you feel good about yourself and yeah. like 
you know, maybe you're coming on a little bit broken <laughs> previously or whatever. It's right. not that I'm saying that they were, but you know, that, <laughs> that, that uh, I have a different approach. Every director that they work with will have a different approach and every director that they work with will, will find different ways to get their best performance. Mm -hmm. You cannot make an apple be an orange. Mm -hmm. You cannot make a rainy day be a sunny day just because it's in the script. If the script calls for squinting in the sun on a brilliantly sunny day and the three hours when you're shooting it, it is pouring rain and you're not going to make the rain not be there, you cannot play that scene that way. Mm -hmm. Likewise with an actor. If an actor who is cast is not, has, y you, have to, you have to deal with the truth of what of the materials mm -hmm. that you have. You can't yeah. turn somebody. I, I, I tried recently in a, in, in a circumstance and, in, and it was painful all around. Doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Does not well, work. Well, that's when it comes back down to finding the truth and the intention of the scene. How important is that sun, the squinting? You know, well, to well, the they, actual, they, like, it may be important to the writer. Right. But it circles right. back to, you know, I mean, I remember theater when I was trying to be an actor and I was a director and I, I, uh, the plays that I wrote every night was different mm -hmm. yeah. and it's interesting you think about um, I've worked with a number of actors who have trouble letting go mm -hmm. because they come in and they have a preconceived notion of what the scene should be mm -hmm. and it turned out differently and they go yeah that was good <laughs> yeah. but boy I wish I'd blah 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 and you know and I kind of sit and I think well and I've said this before um, you take this scene and these actors and this crew and this director and mm. and you do this scene this afternoon and then you do you take all those same elements and you do it tomorrow morning it's going to be different mm -hmm. yeah. the truth of today is going to be different than the truth tomorrow yeah. or the truth 10 minutes from yeah. now mm -hmm. and it's all about accessing you know what what did I bring into the room with me mm -hmm. uh, you know me the director and what did they bring into the room with them and I'm not saying that should inform every scene and every choice that they make mm. but it all you plays. know what they had for breakfast and how they slept last night is gonna have an effect mm -hmm. you know big or small on that scene and yeah. that's kind of the fun part it seems like a really interesting time right now in, in Canadian television I mean you look at kind of the global reach of shows like Degrassi and Fairness on Sketch and, and Cure and Orphan Black and Vikings. Is it getting better, easier to do what you do to tell the stories you're telling? I mean, if you're going to take Degrassi, we used to have seven days to shoot an episode. Mm -hmm. So now we're down to two and a half days per episode. And, uh, and. <laughs> that must and be two hour episodes. Half hour episodes, half yeah. hours. I don't think he's signing on. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. And the truth is, this is crazy, it runs smoother than it ever did. Hmm. And that has a lot to do with who you decide to hire as your crew and how they understand, and everyone's understanding of what's going on. Um, uh, is it more strenuous? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, but that's why we have rehearsal also. That actually works in for us in a big way. Mm -hmm. To have those two days of rehearsal, our kids come in and they're like, what do you want? Yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's like they're already, that, that thing of going like, and we're not even talking about blocking or anything like that. Emotionally, that, that's two steps ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that had to come into place, I think, as, a, uh, as we were starting to run out of time on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, and so the days are bigger and thicker than ever, but it's like uh, we've had to make exceptions to um, get to the floor. And that means rehearsal time and as much prep as possible, you know, so. You know, I, mean, I made a joke about the amount of time you have. And, it's, uh, it's, uh, but I mean, and it has changed. I mean, there are certain shows like, uh, you know, Orphan Black went, you know, nine, 10 days. Vikings is 12 days mm -hmm. plus some, some second unit. Anne's mm -hmm. 11 days. Yeah. On Pure, which is why I'm here, I mean, we shot six episodes in 48 days. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was jammed. We had some big set pieces yeah. in there. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's weird how, you know, when I started out uh, uh, years ago, you know, we were shooting in Canadian television, you were shooting an episode in six and a half or seven days. And it's sort of expanded because there is a certain demand mm -hmm. on certain types of television. And it goes to the kind of television you're making, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, you know, Anne with an E is not Baroness Von Sketch. Mm -hmm. Right, but and it's not, yeah, and it's yeah, and it's not, you know, yeah. and it's not Degrassi, and 
you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Game of Thrones isn't uh, curb your enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. So it's all, you know, yeah. Yeah. to, you know, to say everything should be this big, massive yeah. thing. Yeah. You know? I, I, there's something and to be said. I, I just want to say I've seen Game of Thrones face plant <laughs> and turn in a really substandard episode as many times as I've seen uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm yeah. do it. So yeah. No, there's anyway, something to be said about being under the gun. And, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, trust me, I like when I got some time. But it's, uh, there is something that comes from those d scenes where we're like, what do you mean we've got 12 minutes? That's to when you find those creative so solutions. Yeah, no. there have been those occasions. So those, because, I mean, when I did uh, United States back in the oh, 70s, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, Larry Galbraith, United States with uh, Bo Bridges, we, it was single camera, no, uh, on a stage, you know, like a, a proper set, like, yeah. like the Anne set. <clears throat> Uh, but we rehearsed for three days and we shot mm -hmm. for two or two, two and a half and shot for two and a half, I can't remember, for a half hour and um, single camera yeah. and, and it was yeah. not, but we really rehearsed for two days. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Like it was mm -hmm. a proper rehearsal. No, I, I listen, I'm, I'm being complainy in the sense of like it would be nice to have more time but, but you know, you, you change with the times. I mean, we also have a studio that is incredible. We have a, you know, we have a full, the, that we do not have to transport. Let's just say that it's all. Oh, you walk from prelit to prelit to prelit. Well, it's. Uh, I mean, it's always. There's always a build going on, but there's also we. Our back lot is insane. Like we and our our designers are incredible. So we're not having to go downtown for a downtown scene anymore. Hmm. We don't have wow. that. Our, you yeah, have your own downtown. We have a York. We have a uh, uh, our Yorkville that turns into an Eaton Center. It's all. Ama it's an amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Stephen Stanley is an incredible uh, mm -hmm. art director and has done amazing stuff for us to make sure that's how we can do it. Is that. Our, that world, it's, it's always a, a pleasure to visit for people, I think, because they're like, it doesn't feel like a studio. It feels like a compound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it feels like, you know, that you can have, it's a, very, a great, people have worked there for 10 to 15 years. Like, mm -hmm. they just never left. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the machine is in least, at least in place for us to try to get all those fun things that we want to do. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be the case. And, you you know, the first big thing that you want to do is the first thing that's get nipped in the bud. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, one more time on set. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly shooting a studio show versus like a show that's on lo all the locations right. is, is yeah. a completely different piece. Like yeah, but I'll even say like on, on some of the shows that have had 11, 12 days, the reason they have 11, 12 days is because you're jammed. Mm -hmm. And you're oh, yeah. as jammed on yeah. 12 yeah. days sometimes as you are in six. It's, it's, well, it I'm seems shooting 14 days on the end I'm yeah, shooting yeah, right yeah. now. And I'm jammed. You're jammed. There's a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. I mean, there's, but, you know, we're working with, with kids, and that, mm -hmm. you know, it's got its own, as you know. Yeah. It's like, oh, clock's ticking. Yeah. <laughs> so we're shooting this shot, and then everything else is going to be over the double's head, yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe five sets of twins. Maybe you have five sets of twins that you have to shoot at. Oh, my, sorry? <laughs> working moms. Oh, yeah. True <laughs> enough. Yeah. True enough. Yeah. So then what keeps you coming back to television? I mean, you could try and do a feature film project with a little more control and and not worrying about 12 days and jammed and that's it. Why do you keep coming back to this format? Listen, somebody called me and said, Helen, I got uh, $200 million in an 85-day <laughs> schedule and I want you to do this. I probably said, <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. Haven't got that call yet. <laughs> I have a feature that I'm going to do with Tatiana Maslany in the oh, new oh, year. Amazing. I don't even know how to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Why do I, I come? I come to do my work, and I do my work. I, I I grow where I'm planted. I think the storytellers are as ancient as the caves. We we stood by the fire and we told our stories, and and we were shaman and we were historians and we were scribes in the, in our ways and entertainers, but that and that there are these you know we can have a drama or a comedy or sci-fi or whatever sketch or a big thing blah, blah, blah. but that's all just to occupy the the conscious mind and to open it up so that the subconscious of the audience as they, as we sit in the church of the cave or the cathedral of the theater or the hovel of our bedroom television so that our conscious mind is occupied and out of the way and our subconscious can open up and identify with the archetypal characters that play through all of our stories. It's my work. It's my yeah. work. It's my practice. It's my way of life. I, if, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough because of my unions that between SAG and, and DGAC and DGA and ACTRA, if I never work another day in my life and I live as old as long as my mother who Live to 101 and a half. I'm fine. My rent's paid. I'm mm -hmm. fed. 
So I come to work to do my work. And I, I, I do the work with people that I trust and who want me. All the foibles, all the warts, all the experience, all the whatever, and I show up. Mm. All right. Well, this has been an amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that was lovely. That was lovely. I mean, it's hard to I, follow that. Yeah, seriously. I'm like, I'm like, we're we're going to wrap. We're going we're to go find our own truth in high school hallways and Mennonite uh, Sorry, that's, families and can put that part out, get and around. all the rest. Thank you so much. This was lovely. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you.